Um, hi there. Um, thank you for tuning in. In this video, we'll be talking about creative writing as a viable tool for mass communication. And um, while we have been speaking about this topic for a while, we'll be talking about different uh, different kinds of creative nonfiction today. And um, like we earlier discussed, nonfiction is divided into two broad groups. Which will be plain non-fiction or creative non-fiction. And like we said, um, just to refresh our memory, non-fiction is a work of writing that doesn't involve um, fictional um, um, characters or fictional ideas. It's completely factual. So that has nothing to do with fallacy or anything of the other about. So it is plainly the truth. And um, while we have the plain non-fiction, which doesn't use much of literary devices or much of... Um, uh, creativity or much of ambiguity. We have the creative non-fiction where you're allowed to explore your creative juices um, and explore your creativity the way you like, use the words you like, play on words and use your literary devices. Um, creative fiction is from, um, cre um, creative non-fiction is different from um, plain non-fiction in the sense that you are allowed the creative freedom in creative non-fiction. While in plain non-fiction, there is rigidity of of um, style, rigidity of content as uh, well as context, as well as context. Okay, so according to Wikipedia, creative non-fiction is a genre of writing that uses literary styles and techniques to create accurate narratives. Like I said earlier, non-fiction has to do with um, factual and accurate narratives. So we have this factually accurate narrative means no matter how creative it has to be, it has to be within the confines of truth. So no matter what you write, you don't exaggerate. Your exaggerations have to, um, have to fit in within a margin of truth to ensure that um, to ensure that you are not any lies and um, what else? Okay, so it's an experimental form of scripting non-fiction that resonates beautifully with an enthusiastic audience. As a new journey, this is in constant evolution, yeah, that is very, is very important. It is evolving. There are different styles of um, creative non-fiction. There are some you have never heard of and some that are going by the day. Um, some we are familiar with and some that just, they just, they just categorize them as journey bending Pros. So, um, yeah, there the, the, the are some forms of creative nonfiction like um, Haibun, Tanka, um, and those are not very common. So, the common forms of creative nonfiction, yeah, I said common forms, would include humor or satire, literary journalism, lyric essays. And memoirs. So, like we said, humor or satire, lyric essays, and memoirs. Also, other forms of creative nonfiction would include personal essays, prose poetry, travel logs, and travel notes. And um, here is a chart that, although a very small one, it is um, dividing or showing the various forms, various examples of creative nonfiction forms. Well, we have humor and satire, literary journalism, lyric essay, memoirs, personal essays, prose poetry, travel logs, or travel notes, and others. Um, so the first one we're talking about is humor or satire. Um, this satire is a journey of visual, literary, and performing arts, usually in the form of fiction, and less frequently than fiction, in which vices follies, abuses, and shortcomings are held up to ridicule. Yes, satire is mostly a parody of reality. You write what's happening in reality, however, you are expressing it in, um, in a way that, is, that, that seems like a derision of the actual reality. For example, a man is greedy. So you write it in a way that presents the man in a form that is different from his form, although in a form that happens to be... Um, a perfect depiction of the reality, however, not 
the way it is in reality. For example, someone is greedy, like I mentioned earlier, can't pick the person as a pig that eats anything that comes his way or something like that. So it just shows how creative you are. Um, um, like, like for example, you have this George Orwell's The Animal Farm where he um, criticized the leadership of the time and he expressed it in anyone who understands the reality at, at, that, at that time will know that what he's talking about. However, he expressed it in a way that doesn't put him in the way of harm. So, um, this is like what, what I said when I was introducing literature. I said literature can be used um, for for unpopular topics where you have to explore unpopular topics without getting harm's way. For um, topics your tongue should not talk about, your tongue should not broach. So satire is often used with the intent of shaming or exposing passive flaws in the individuals, corporations, government or society itself into improvement. Yes, it is mostly written to evoke change because every every one of every one of the in, uh, elements or any one of the physical elements in the satire piece you have written would identify the points that speaks about them, and immediately they ad, um, identify this. If they are ready to seek redress, if they are ready to change. The change begins immediately they identify that yes we are speaking about them or we are speaking to them with this piece so the next one is literary journalism according to literary um thought co says literary journalism is a form of non-fiction that combines factual reporting with narrative techniques and stylistic strategies traditionally associated with fiction yeah so um like i mentioned earlier um creative writing has gives the writer the creative freedom to explore um, his choices, explore options of literary devices, write freely. However, whatever is writing must be factual. So, literary journalism is simply employing your creative techniques, employing your creativity, bring your creativity to work in 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 scripting journal journalistic um, pieces. For example, um, when you there, there there are different forms of writing features. Um, current current day journalism that um, appealing. When you read them, you feel intrigued by the um, narrative style, by the reporting style, which is different from the general reports that are, that are just bland, like in general journalism that falls under the brand, um, the the broad group of um, um, bland fic non-fiction. Sorry. Um, the next one is Larry Kesey. Like I said, it's a literary hybrid. Hybrid. Sorry. That combines ele elements of um, poetry, essay, and memoir. Like I guess it's a relatively new form, a relatively new form of creative nonfiction. Um, so, a lyric essay is more of writing a personal essay. <clears throat> However, you infuse elements of um, poetry, or it's, it's more like a prose poem. In the um, however, a person is talking about the personal experience. Or a prose poem that I was talking about, or a, a, a personal essay written in prosaic form, uh, sorry, in, in poetic form, where you use poetic devices. And, but, but what we are saying is completely factual. You are expressing yourself, however, with poetic license. And we also have memoirs. Yeah, like I mentioned when we were talking about factual non fiction, we have biographies and autobiographies. However, um, memoirs just talk about a particular event or a particular um, journey or a particular day. Just a portion, a, um, how would I call it, a tiny portion of one's life when you reproduce it in textual form. We call this a memoir. It could be a, a, a stretch of your life. It could be just a few days, just a few hours. But regardless of how long it is, a memoir doesn't explore the whole life. It explores just the part of your the life your life you want others to read about. For example, like I mentioned earlier um, in previous videos, I mentioned Professor Wilson Kass memoir of um, of um, 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 of his time in prison where he wrote the man the man died. Also, there there's this um, mem there's this memoir by um, uh, his name is not coming about the eclipse. There's this eclipse that occurred I think around the two thousands. She, um, this female writer, I've forgotten her name, she wrote about the eclipse. Or oh, father's brief, my father's briefcase by one Turkish writer. So it's a memoir, you relive a particular life part of your, a particular portion of your life and um, 
put it into writing. Um, the next one is personal essays. So according to Thought School, personal essays are short works of autobiographical non-fiction characterized by a sense of intimacy and conversational manner. Yeah. While memoirs can be um, random, can just be anyhow, poetic, just a, a presentation of um, a part of your life, personal essays are mostly conversational. Like, there's this sort of conversation, like you, you say it in a way you, you want the person to understand everything you're saying. So you, um, you like kind of attract your audience, hold the attention of your, of your audience, ensure that the audience is flowing with you. So you write in a way that is, um, how would I call it, a way that is gripping, and at the same time, exchanging. So when you were exchanging, uh, it's kind of you are exchanging an idea with your audience or with your readers. So when they read, when they read, they feel like they can give you responses. For example, you, um, you are writing a, a, um, a personal essay. You can start with anecdotes, and when you go into the details of the event or the details of the particular um, memory you are you are reliving, you would engage them, leave them clues, leave them questions. In a way that they feel like, oh, yes, I can feel him. I can relate to this. Um, also, we have post poetry, yeah. Post poetry is, um, okay, according to Wikipedia, post poetry is poetry written in post form instead of vast form. While preserving poetic qualities such as heightened imagery, parataxis, and emotional effects, yeah. Um, like I mentioned earlier, when I was explaining Larry Kessey, and Larry Kessey is a pro poem in prose form, however, talking about personal experience. Prose poetry, on the other hand, is poem in, instead of standards and lines, it should be in um, paragraphs. However, it can talk about anything in particular. It can be about a tree, it can be about um, a day, it can be about just anything, as long as it's not about the person. When it's about your person or yourself, it, it becomes a lyric essay or a memoir, depending on how you want it to be. Um, also, we have travel logs and travel notes. Yeah, A travel note or travel log, um, or travel logs, according to Wikipedia, or travel notes, encompass outdoor literature, guidebooks, nature writing, and travel memoirs. So, um, travel log is um, a detailed narrative of how a journey went, or how how a trip went, or it, it highlights the important parts of the journey, important parts of the trip, and um, 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 things that, that strike the memory, things that, that, that stand out. You know, there's, there's only something that will stand out. You cannot just have a particular trip and not, and not have certain experiences that are not common with other journeys or with other trips. So the, the travel log or travel note is more of a personal experience with a tinge of a guide for other people who want to explore that particular location. For example, when you travel to um, Ikogo Siwon Springs, you would write the travel log in a way that you would express yourself, you express your, your um, whatever you enjoyed or express yourself um, as regards to the, um, the place, as regards to your journey, as regards to your stay there. You talk about the things you enjoy, the things you didn't enjoy. You also I highlight, also I highlight the things that make that particular location stand out, or the things that make the the, the particular location, um, um, how do I call it, far from what what um, the the promoters are trying to paint. Or if it happens to be a, a disappointing or distasteful location, you'd, uh, it's more like a review and at the same time a personal essay that that is more intimate and personal. It's more like, yeah, more like a personal essay where you give um, the, your audience an insight into your life, an insight into the location you visited, or an insight into the journey, how the journey went, and, have, um, and everything, every other thing that, uh, that um, happened with the journey, or every other thing that is common with the journey. Um, so here's where we draw the curtains, and um, until the next video, thank you for tuning in.